dado la ayuda militar al militar de Guatemala, porque pues la ayuda pues, que, que recibe es mandado por el gobierno de Estados Unidos. We also ask that um, you were to cut off U.S. Uh, military aid to Guatemala. Eh, y también eh, denunciar pues todo lo que está pasando en Guatemala para que la gente llegue pues a saber lo que está pasando en Guatemala porque casi pues no se escucha todo lo que está pasando en Guatemala. Another thing that you do is just announce the general environment of, uh, of violence in Guatemala in a human rights situation in Guatemala because much that goes on is never heard uh, outside in the outside community. <laughs> Since the army has the control of the three powers in Guatemala and, of course, the control of in the Congress and the fiscal department, from the economic aid, 120 million, 150, 200 million, the only thing that the army do is that they just transfer through the fiscal department more than half of this economic aid to the military. To give an example, uh, more than 33% of the national budget, and when I'm talking about the national budget in Guatemala, I'm not talking about the economic aid from other countries. From the national budget in Guatemala, more than 33% uh, goes to the military. So uh, you have an idea of the figures, how it works. I mean, I mentioned that we don't hear much about the situation going on here in the States, but uh, I just know why that is, why it's being so neglected. Casi no se escucha la situación de Guatemala en Estados Unidos. ¿Cuál es la razón por la cual? La razón fue que no se oiga nada de lo que está pasando en Guatemala, porque eso es pues lo que ellos quieren, pues que no se escucha pues, la, la situación en Guatemala. Ellos pues lo que han querido pues eh, decir que en Guatemala pues hay democracia, hay paz. The reason that you don't hear anything is because uh, the very people in control in Guatemala don't 
don't want you to know what's going on. Rather, you know, they don't want you to know the reality of what's going on. What they want to promote is the idea that there's democracy in Guatemala and that there's peace. Y también, pues, en el Congreso también han llevado una mujer indígena para presentar la mujer indígena en, en, en las Naciones Unidas, que, que pues, eh, que se llama María Shuya, que viene de Timor Leste. Um, uh, one of the things that the, the, they've done is they, the, the Guatemalan Congress has an indigenous woman as, as a member of the Congress, and they've um, paraded her before the United Nations and other activities like this. Ella pues ha, ha dicho que, que en Guatemala la mujer indígena se ha tomado en cuenta, pero ella pues no sabe, no sabe, no siente que solo ella pues se le ha tomado o se le ha comprado para para dar pues imagen al gobierno y no mira pues la situación pues de las mujeres en general. Um, she's been uh, appeared before these different institutions, these or international organizations, and said that the indigenous women in Guatemala are developing and, and are leading basically a good life. But this woman doesn't know that she's been bought and off by these people and that she's just being used to uh, tell her what's really going on. Dice que también los medios de comunicaciones también son pues controlados por los, por los militares que no, pues, no son permitidos de sacar pues las, las denuncias o lo que está pasando en Guatemala. And the press is controlled by the military as well. Um, they only allow certain information that they want, that they allow people to get. Something important about that too is that uh, the reason that Guatemala is submerged in a black hole, like uh, probably Ellen had the opportunity to listen to Coburn this year in June in the National Conference in Washington, D.C., when Coburn stated that it seems like Guatemala is under a conspiracy of silence. And it's true. He's right. Uh, you hear a lot about what's going on in Salvador, what's going on in Nicaragua, what's, what's going on in Panama and the uh, invasion by the U.S. armed forces in December of last year, but you barely hear what's going on in Guatemala. The reason why is that Guatemala is very extremely strategic for the U.S. administration, economically, politically, militarily, and geographically speaking. Guatemala has played, historically, Guatemala has played a leading role in Central America. Also, the Guatemalan army has played a very important role in Central America, even in the colonial times when the Spaniards were in power. Uh, and having in mind that there are more than 400 North American transnationals or corporations actively operating in Guatemala. So this gives you an idea of why Guatemala is submerged in this uh, black hole or, or wrap-up in this uh, wall of silence. Under the domino theory, the U.S. administrations have always, they, are, they have convinced themselves that if they lose Guatemala, <laughs> lose Guatemala, they're going to lose the whole region. They were by the mid-1980s, the mid-80s, the U.S. administration said, well, we can, we can probably lose Nicaragua, or we maybe accept to lose El Salvador in a certain point of the history, but we cannot lose Guatemala, because if we lose Guatemala, we're going to be in big trouble. So that's the problem. <coughs> well, I, I mean, I agree with that somewhat, yeah, but mm -hmm. there's other points, too. Well, yes, yes. And then, in, in El Salvador, we care from El Salvador, not because Christiani complains, we care from El Salvador because the FS and the FMLN is very strong and very outspoken. Mm -hmm. We hear a lot from Nicaragua because in Nicaragua the people took power. Mm -hmm. We hear from Panama, not through the Panamanians, but through the United States, mm -hmm. they had this little party down there. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, I, I mean, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Well, I, I wonder how strong these guerrilla groups are and uh, how can we hear more from them? <laughs> Pero también a lo mejor los mejores salvadores porque el FMLN está muy fuerte ¿verdad? Uh -huh. y ha podido llevar la guerra o escalar la guerra a otros niveles. En Nicaragua, pues, porque la injerencia la contra de toda la cuestión, ¿verdad? Es decir, después de una revolución de 69. En Panamá, porque no vimos de los panameños, sino que de los niños norteamericanos, <risa> cosa que no se puede no, no de acuerdo con ella. Eh, y, pero, ¿qué tan fuerte es la guerrilla en Guatemala? Eh, ¿Por qué no nos escucha Guatemala? Pregunta. Y junto con eso, dado que ustedes, las viudas y las mujeres, han sufrido la represión y tienen por objetivo mejorar su condición, y la condición de las compañeras y demás, ¿cómo es que ustedes están trabajando independientemente de la guerrilla? Yo hubiera esperado que hubiera conexiones naturales.
padres. Incluso hubiera esperado que en la guerrilla haya muchos de los hijos, de los hermanos y de los, de los maridos que puedan quedar vivos de repente. Um, should I translate? Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, I said that I was a bit surprised when she said that uh, the, the, the Widows Association has no connection to the guerrillas. And I said that uh, this surprised me for two things. One, because supposedly they are pursuing the same objectives, and therefore I would have expected that there would have been some sort of solidarity between them. And second, if the guerrilla is a popular extraction, I would expect that many of the brothers and and husbands and sons of these uh, indigenous women are actually in the guerrillas. You would like to see that, or you I would mean, or I, you I believe? Mean, well, where I come from, the guerrilla was of very high social extraction. It was well, you're talking about the Montoneros, and that's no, the I'm urban not type of work. I'm Uruguayan. Oh, Uruguayan, Uruguay, Uruguay, Uruguay. 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 all right, yeah. I but, uh, but, uh, I would expect it, yeah. I mean, I, I would think that the gorilla is a popular extraction. This is what you see most often. Once again, I guess that it's, uh, each process, liberation process in Latin America and the third world has their own characteristics. Mm -hmm. For instance, in Guatemala, the war in Guatemala is the, the, the oldest war in Latin America. It has more than 30 years of existence. Even the war in Guatemala, if we have in mind that there are more than 150,000 political killings since 1954, more than 40,000 disappearances since 1966, the Guatemala has been experienced systematic uh, counterinsurgency program since 1966, right? Uh, you can have an idea of it. Once again, uh, the reason that Guatemala is submerged in this black hole is because in Guatemala, the low intensity conflict in these counterinsurgency policies over the years are greatly sophisticated. For instance, in El Salvador, there is no model villages in El Salvador. There's no concentration camps. There's no development posts. There's no civilian patrols. Civil patrols in Guatemala have more than one million boys and men forcibly participating. See, Guatemala has this country insurgency policy that the, those polos de desarrollo, development posts, were high security areas in the high rise. There are six development posts. And inside the six development posts are dozens of model villages or concentration camps. Back then, when uh, Rios Mon, in 18 months, he was capable to establish the modern low intensity conflict in Guatemala, these model villages were titled as strategic hamlets, like the ones in Vietnam. Just to give an example of how sophisticated is the country agency program in Guatemala, those model villages and those development poles are a symbiosis of three different country agency policies in the world. There's a symbiosis out of the kibbutz and the Gaza Strip, where the Palestinians are reconcentrated, the Batustans in South Africa, and also the strategic hamlets from, from Vietnam. When Rios Mon designed this plan with Israelis and uh, think tanks from the US and everything, he created this symbiotic uh, counterinsurgency program in Guatemala. It never uh, uh, was the uh, Nicaragua under the Somoza dictatorship, never had this type of country, sophisticated counterinsurgency program, neither uh, Argentina or Uruguay. See, when you're talking about the, uh, the armed opposition forces or the so-called guerrillas in Uruguay, the Tupamaros, you're talking about an urban guerrilla, not a rural uh, warfare. Nobody lives in the in Uruguay. Well, yeah, and that's another thing in Guatemala. We have to have in mind that more than 60% of the Guatemalan population are indigenous. Mm -hmm. There are 22 different ethnic groups with their own languages and their own uh, traditional dress and the culture. Uh, if Another of your questions is about El Salvador and, and Nicaragua. Once again, uh, like I stated previously, the URNG is publicly known, uh, pu publicly known already 
They, they are operating in more than 13 departments in, of Guatemala. Guatemala is composed by 22 states, little states. So they're operating in more than half of the Guatemalan territory. Uh, they're causing 2,000 casualties, more than 2,000 casualties to the army per year. Uh, 75 graduated officers from the army are dying in this war. And the army just has the capability to graduate 50 officers per year. You can see that, that the Guatemalan army is carrying over this war with a great deficit in human resources. Now, you have to see the brutality of the Guatemalan army, the brutality of the security forces. Guatemala, historically speaking, has a counterinsurgency elite troops, the Caibiles, and they call themselves messengers of death, the best well-trained elite counterinsurgency troops in Latin America and maybe in the third world. So these own characteristics, the specific characteristics of the Guatemala situation, has Guatemala submerged in this uh, black. And also, the US administration is very tight and very strict in terms of how the media will approach the problem in Guatemala and the covert actions in Guatemala. Uh, I don't know if that answers your question. In Nicaragua, of course. After the revolution, uh, Somoza, that's another problem. And Guatemala haven't had a, a single dictator in its history. The dictator in Guatemala is an institutional, a constitutional army. A Guatemalan army that is an occupational, an army of occupation within its territory, because it doesn't play a role of an institutional army. As far as I understand, the concept of an institutional and constitutional army is the armed forces who are supposed to defend the territory against a neighbor uh, or external aggression of a country. And the Guatemalan army does not have any war with another one of its neighbors. It's against the Guatemalan people. Even in my Conadigua, are you saying that you will expect or would you like to see the Conadigua uh, coordinating with armed forces and their sons and their husbands fighting that, like uh, Fermina said. Uh, the armed forces had their own way to struggle, their own demands, and the popular movement in Guatemala struggles in different way with their own demands on armed popular movement in Guatemala. See, if there's gonna be a coincidence, historically speaking, between the popular movement and the armed forces, I cannot tell you.
for the international community, demonstrating that, uh, trying to demonstrate that there's a democracy going on, uh, but in reality, it's, this person doesn't have any power. Si dejan los militares de gobernar, entonces sí pues va, vamos a tener un, un gobierno de nosotros como pueblo. If the military stops governing, being the, the power in the country that governs, then the people themselves will be able to, to govern. Once again, we in Guatemala, we base over as Guatemalans. We would like to see five main points of a government in Guatemala, of course civilian government, under a type of formal democracy if, if they want. One is we want freedom, democracy, peace and justice, and self-determination. When we're talking about self-determination, we are not inventing the words. We're taking the words from Roosevelt, from the 40s. But when we talk about freedom in Guatemala, we cannot talk about in an abstract way how freedom it is. When we're talking about democracy in Guatemala, when we're talking about social justice and peace, see, we're talking, in social justice, we're talking about land reform. What's the problem? The unequal distribution of land in Guatemala. See, 2% of the Guatemalan population owns more than 65% of the land, while more than 66% of the population, primarily indigenous, don't have any land. So we go, we go here and we come back again to the same point. It's like a vicious sort of Are either of the two candidates that are going to be in the runoff election um, less popular than the other one? Because it seems like they're both running for the same candidates. Yeah, less or more. candidates' background and an information that we have there is uh, Solo, uh, Serrano Elias from the Mass Party and also uh, Carpio Nicole and Manuel Ayao from the UCM. They're not resume, but backgrounds. Yeah. Hilo, hilo, hilo a hilo, 
y lo hemos terminado. Y así pues nos vamos tejiendo en nuestra organización de, y la esperanza pues de encontrar lo que estamos buscando. As we weave our clothing and other materials thread by thread, we also are building our organization day by day and step by step to arrive at our goals. Y esperamos la solidaridad de ustedes con nosotros. And we await your solidarity.